Whenever you catastrophize, you actually make yourself imagine the worst possible outcome, the worst case in a situation, and then you imagine that you can't cope with that worst possible outcome that you're going to find yourself in. But it doesn't have to be this way. Keep watching to find out how you can change that way of thinking forever. So catastrophizing means you are seeing the worst possible. And this is all going to go wrong. This is going to end in tears. This is going to be a disaster. This is a nightmare. I'm falling apart. I'm dying here. And so when you catastrophize, it cannot help but make you feel anxious. And when you feel anxious, you're envisaging a threat when there is none. And this threat is imagined, but it feels very real. So catastrophizing happens when you see the worst case scenario through many stages, finding a small lump in your body. You know, I've got cancer, I'm going to die. Think you're going to miss a train and your business is going to collapse. You're going to go bankrupt. You're going to lose the home. Imagining your partner's a few minutes late and they've died and this is all terrible. Your kids not come home on time. You think they're being kidnapped or they're out having sex with some completely unsuitable person. So catastrophizing means taking something very normal. I'm in a traffic jam. How normal is that? This is hell. I'm going to miss my meeting. I'm going to lose my job. Then I'll lose my home. Nobody understands. This traffic is killing me. It's a nightmare. It's Christmas. Oh, my God, what a nightmare. I've got people coming. I can't stand them. I can't afford to do, buy all this food. I can't afford all the gifts. This is so stressful. I wish they weren't coming. I've got so much to do. There's no way I can do shopping, wrapping, cooking, prepping in this time I've got. This is hell. This is a nightmare. This makes me want to die. You see, we use incredibly powerful words. This is killing me. I'm dying here. I can't cope. This is hell on earth. And when you use those words, because your words shape your reaction, when you use incredible words, I have clients telling up in my office going, oh, what a nightmare I was getting here. You know, that traffic jam killed me. It was torture being on the train. Uh, the Uber driver was a nightmare. And really, they're talking about a little bit of traffic. It's not torture being in a store in a line to buy your shopping. It's not torture being on the freeway. But when you use those powerful words, it's a nightmare, a disaster. You have to feel all the emotions that go along with the words you're using because your words are making you feel distraught over something that isn't a big issue. I'm in traffic. It's a pain, but I can play great music. I can find a great audio book and listen to that. Yeah, it's uncomfortable being in the store with a long line, but hey, I've got money. I'm buying food for people I love. My kid's teacher is driving me crazy. No, you are letting them drive you crazy by using the wrong words. You're buying into a situation you are imagining something, and your imagination is the most powerful part of you. And you imagine, I know I've got cancer. I know something terrible is going on with my body. I know this is all going to go wrong. The pictures you are creating, and indeed the words you're using, are having a powerful impact on your emotional state. Every thought you think has a physical reaction and an emotional one too. When you're given placebo pills, you think, oh, that's going to make me better. And that works. So placebo means your thoughts are creating a real effect on your body. When you think, I got a headache, it's killing me, I'm in agony, I now can't do any of my work today, I'm going to lose this client. That's really extreme. When you say, I've got a slight headache, I'm probably dehydrated, I need to drink some water, hydrate myself, do some deep breathing, maybe take a little paracetamol, and in half an hour I'll be fine, and I'll be back cracking on doing what I plan to do with my day. Our brains are actually hardwired to focus on the bad things because that's 
how we lived. When we lived in the wild, we learned not to go out late at night. When I was in Africa, I didn't leave my hut and go to the bathroom at night when lions are around. I learned to be on my guard 24-7. I learned to this day, we, we lock our doors at night. We put on the chain, we put on the alarm because we're planning to be safe. But we're not thinking, oh, I need to lock all the doors. Someone's going to come in. I'm going to get murdered in my bed. When I put a seatbelt on every time I drive my car, I don't think I'm going to be rear-ended, I'm going to fly through the windscreen, I'm going to die. I think this is the law and it's keeping me safe. But I don't catastrophize when I get on a plane or in the car and I don't want you to do that either. I want you to recognize the words you say, I'm going on a plane, what if it crashes? I'm, I'm going on the subway. What if something happens down there? You have to stop using dramatic language. And it really works to pay attention to the words you're using. Ask people around you, how often do I say, this is hell, this is a nightmare, this is killing me, this is driving me crazy, this is terrifying. A beautiful model came to see me and said, you know, I've got all these problems, I've got gut problems and stomach problems and headaches. And the word she used was nightmare. She said, you know, I just got this huge makeup going, what a nightmare. I I've just been offered this job modeling and I've got to ski for this thing. This is a nightmare. Whenever I get on a plane, people hit on me. It's a nightmare. I said, what? why is it a nightmare? I don't understand the nightmare. She went, no, no, I didn't really mean that. I said, but you keep saying nightmare. You've said it three times in the space of a minute. And do you understand when you use the word nightmare, it's a nightmare. What a nightmare. That's a nightmare. Oh, nightmare. You're actually living as if your whole life is a nightmare. You're a beautiful model with a contract worth millions of dollars. And people hit on you because you're gorgeous. That's someone's fantasy dream come true. And if you don't like it, either leave your job, put on a baseball cap and glasses and put a, read a book on a plane, you can change it. Or you can accept it. What you can't do is, I can't accept it, I can't change it. I can't accept it, I can't change it. You can change it by changing your language. I was someone who had gut issues, and guess what he said every day? I'm losing my shit. I will lose my shit if I have to deal with this one more time. And then he began to get chronic diarrhea. It's like, wow, why do you even think that's unusual? You've been telling your mind for years. I met a doctor who said, you know, when I read your book, I realized something. I say every day, this is doing my head in. She said, you know, I got a brain tumor. And I knew that I used that word, doing my head in. I can't take it. This is doing my head in. So take a minute and notice the words you use and then stop. If you say, my kid is killing me, my kid is driving me crazy, this kid is making me insane. How about saying, hey, my kid is age appropriate. This is what they do when they're two. And they're not two for very long. Soon they'll be 18. They won't be keeping me up all night. I won't even see them. My boss is a nightmare. Why not say my boss is a challenge? But hey, I, I know how to deal with my boss. I've got great skills. I'm good at my job. This commute is going to be the death of me. I'm dying under my paperwork. I can deal with my commute. And I'm getting through my paperwork bit by bit. I'm on it. I have got phenomenal coping skills. In fact, changing, killing me, driving me crazy, nightmare, hell on earth, dying. If you start to say this magic phrase, I have got phenomenal coping skills. I can deal with anything. This is a challenge. This is a situation. But I can deal with it. It's okay because I've got amazing, phenomenal, incredible coping skills. You're saying to my not, oh, don't give me any stress. I can't deal with that. You're saying, whatever you put in front of me, I can deal with it. It's all going to be okay. You know, last year, my house got completely flooded, and it was a challenge. It wasn't a nightmare. And every time I had to walk down there and see the builders and look at the damage, I'd play Bob Marley's song, Every Little Thing is going to be all right. Then I'd play a song by E17. It goes, all right, all right. It's really all right. And every time I walked to my house, 
and looked at it, I think everything's going to be all right. How lucky I've got insurance. Everything was all right. But you know, I had a choice. I go, oh, this is hell. Oh my God, these builders are hell. They never turn up. They're getting everything wrong. They're lying to me. Or I could say, it's really all right because you have a choice every day and here's your choice. You can choose to rationalize how bad, how awful, how terrible things are or you can choose to talk yourself out of it. So you have a choice, choose to be negative and catastrophize or choose to stop that and look for the positive because you know what you can't choose. You can't choose what you do to your body when you go into the negative. This is hell. This is a nightmare. I can't stand it. Somebody wrote to me and said, you know, I listened to you talking and the most amazing thing happened. I realized how much I say I can't stand it. I can't stand my husband leaving his pants on the floor. I can't stand my kids not putting the jar back on the peanut butter. He said, and I've had collapsed foot arches for years. It's very painful. When I stopped saying I can't stand it, you won't believe this, my foot arches stopped hurting because I understood how much I said I can't stand it. And I just stopped saying it overnight. I paid attention and I stopped. So you can choose to be negative. You can choose to be positive. You cannot choose what it does to your body when you go into, oh, my life is hell. My life is a nightmare. If one more person goes to me, I'm going to jump under a train. If one more person lets me down, I'm just going to stick my head in the oven. You know, we say these crazy things. We don't mean them. We say, oh, if I look at a cake, I get fat. I'm out of control. I'm a train wreck. Look at the state of me. Stop it. It doesn't help you at all. It just makes you feel worse. Your language is yours to change. Your beliefs are yours to change and your thoughts are yours to change. And we've had an amazing last year with COVID and restrictions and I couldn't get back to my home in America for nearly a year. That was a challenge. I had to go to Mexico. I didn't want to go. I had a great time. I found this little place called Todos Santos. It's like, wow, I love it here. In fact, I was counting the days to get home. I had pets and a flooded house and things I hadn't expected when I left. But then I thought, you know, I could actually stay here longer. I'm really enjoying it. So sometimes in adversity, we think, well, you know, I was really sad when that relationship ended. But hey, I found someone better. I got fired that it was the worst thing in the world, but I got a better job. So don't allow yourself to drift into catastrophizing because it's horrible for you, but it's also horrible for everyone around you. When I'm working and people say, oh, this is a nightmare, I go, look, if we can't change it and we can't accept it, what's the point? I recently was going somewhere and we turned up and we went, oh my God, this venue is awful. I hate the venue. I said, look, we can't change the venue now. So we've always got a choice. Can we accept it or can we change it? If we can't change it, We've got to accept it and look for some good things. We can dress it up and make it better than it is. We can work with it. But when you can't accept it and you can't change it, you go around in circles. Accept it and look for some good things about it or change it or at least change the way you talk about it. And you don't just have to use my methods, although they are really good. You can use breathing. You can use meditation. You can even notice your kids and how they talk to you. My little girl came home and she goes, Mommy, how does Philippa get on the ceiling? I went, I, I don't know, darling. Tell me more. She goes, well, Philippa said if we make a mess, she will go up the wall. If we don't put our crayons away, she will go up the wall. And if we don't eat our lunch, she will go up the wall. And my daughter was fascinated by imagining how this person could get up the wall. And, you know, when I had a baby, I noticed how many people would say, oh, yeah, the, the, the waking up at night is killing me. I, I'm dying. I'm going insane. Something. I'm going insane with sleep deprivation. And I get that when you have a baby that keeps you up. But you're not really going insane. It doesn't last that long. And there are things that you can do to deal with that. But the biggest thing is you've got to notice it. You can't fix what you don't understand. Notice your language and then change it. And if you want to take this further, we have amazing RTT therapists who are trained 
to work with people who are stuck in a pattern like this. We do something called root cause therapy where we take you back to understand Maybe your mother said, this will all end in tears. It's all going to go wrong. Nobody can have everything. Something's got to give. Sometimes you just learn how you learned negative language, negative expectations. Here's something you're like, I want, never get, don't ask. And we think, oh, I mustn't ask for anything. And here I am. And if I ask for nothing, what do I get? <laughs> the answer is nothing. So when you go back and see these simple seemingly simple things that have colored, affected, and influenced your entire life, it changes everything. It changes your relationship with money, your relationship with others, your relationship with yourself. RTD is amazing at showing you how you got to be the way you are and then showing you how you can change it immediately. If you want help with anxiety or feeling stuck, or knowing that you catastrophize. If you want to have phenomenal coping skills all the time, click the link below. And if you want to learn more about helping people who experience issues like anxiety, if you would like to train to do what I do, to be a kind of version of me, then click the link below and we'll send you an RTT brochure. Thanks for listening. See you really soon. Check out my next video here. If people actually knew this shame that I have, no one would ever love me, no one would ever accept me, no one would ever want to hang out with me, be my friend, they would outcast me. That was the internal mm. conversation. If they knew this shame and insecurity of mine. And so I think that's why I held on to it for 25